So you want to make your game nice and juicy. Game juice, or Google Trends thinks that it's called game feel, are the tiny tweaks and effects that you put into a game that makes everything just feel better. It's the sort of thing that makes hits feel satisfying in One Finger Death Punch. Or shooting in Nuclear Throne. It's the sort of thing that takes an okay game and turns it into a great one. And so we're going to be going over this example, created by Sleeper Games, that's actually already in Engine and you can see it for yourself. It breaks down the different parts of game feel that relate to combat or firing a gun. And we're going to start with hit lag, otherwise known as freeze frame, where something strikes something else and on the moment of impact you freeze the game for a frame to give you a moment to appreciate the impact before going back to the regular speed of the game. So the easiest way to do this in GDevelop is by going to the event where the collision happens, changing the time scale to zero or close to zero, waiting for a fraction of a second, and then changing the time scale back to normal. Personally, I think this works best for melee games or to emphasize when you as the player get hit. Next is visual effects. Usually particles or a sprite that's drawn to show sparks or splatter or gusts of wind and things like that that help you sell impact. It is definitely possible to go overboard with particles, but having them in just the right place will definitely help sell the effect. We already have a video on particles, so we'll move on to the next point. Next is hit flash, which can be a tinting of the character or a flashing of their visibility. Usually a tinting of the character is used on enemies, and for the player, it's the flashing of visibility. Because the player will definitely want to know where the enemy is on screen at all times. And to tint the color of a character, there is a tint action. But the easiest way to do it is with the flash extension, where you just install the extension, and then add it as a behavior, and then set the duration of the flash in the action when you trigger it. Next up is Wobble, also known as Squash, Stretch, and Shaking. The easiest way to achieve this is with the Object Shake extension, where you install the extension and then apply it as a behavior to the object that you want to shake. And then when you trigger that shake, you determine how you want it to look. If you can't get the exact look you want with the Object Shake extension, you can use Tweens. And for that one, we've made another video. And then the second last one is Damage Text, which isn't going to apply to all games, but any game where the damage that you do varies, based on how strong you are or your enemy is, you will probably want damage text. So the easiest way to create damage text is just to make the object, and then at the point of collision, use the action create an object, then modify that text object to show the variable you want it to, and then tween its Y position upwards, and then toggle the setting to delete the object when the tween is finished. Different games will have their text tween differently, but that's just a matter of setting up different tweens to match the style of your game. And then the last one is Screen Shake, which is massively important. Screen Shake gets used all over your game, like at points of collision, or when heavy doors open. And this is probably the easiest one to use of all, because you just install the extension, and then go to the point where you want it to trigger, and use the action to shake screen, and then set the duration to be what you want it to be. These techniques are used in basically every modern game. Some games use them more subtly, and others go over the top. And now to learn how to use particles or tweens, check out these videos.